Hi, y'all. Thanks so much for joining our virtual training today, Organizing a Taxathon, how, Why and How to Do It. I'm Jenny Huang, the Outreach Associate for the Get It Back campaign. So for those who <coughs> may not know about us, the Get It Back campaign is a national effort to promote the Earned Income Tax Credit and Child Tax Credit. We provide support to community organizations, advocacy groups, and national organizations to, provide, to promote tax credits and free tax filing. We provide outreach materials, trainings, and other resources to help you in this work. Our website, eitcoutreach.org, has many of these resources to get you started. Today's webinar is part of our virtual training series that features the expertise of campaign partners in the field. We focus on specific outreach strategies uh, and skills that you can apply in your outreach and vital work. So in the past, we've had trainings on how to recruit and retain volunteers, how to use texting, and how to include FAFSA help at tax sites. Um, this fall, we're also planning on having another uh, training on volunteer recruitment and retention, as well as a potential training on fundraising for VITA. Uh, you can find these past trainings on our blogs, as well as um, you can also register for future trainings as well. If there's any topic you'd like to learn more about, please feel free to let us know in the uh, please, ah, please feel free to let us know. Sorry, I can talk. <laughs> so before we get started, we wanted to do a couple quick poll questions to see what kinds of events you all are already hosting at your tax site. Okay, so our first question is. Have you hosted a tax filing event before? Just select yes or no. And I'll just give you a few more moments to select your answer. Okay. So it looks like 54% of you have, uh, have hosted a tax filing event before and 46% of you have not. Awesome, okay. So let's go to the next poll question. So, do you currently throw events for your tax program, uh, either for general marketing or media attention during any time of the year? Yes or no? Again, going to give uh, you all a few more moments to answer before I close it. Okay, 45% uh, of you have thrown events during any time of the year, and 55% of you have not. Okay. <coughs> And our last question for right now is, how would you describe your VITA organization? Would you describe it as large, medium, or small? Awesome. So 32% um, of you describe your VITA site as large, 42% of you describe it as medium, and 32% uh, describe your organization as small. Uh, so you're about evenly split. That'll be helpful for the presenters um, to know before they get started. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for answering our questions. With that, I'm going to turn it to Sam Park, who will introduce the trainers, the training and the speakers. Hello, everyone, and thanks again for joining today's training. Our presenters today will be offering resources and insights on how to plan a successful taxathon. And here's just a little background on them all. Taylor Putz works with Prepare and Prosper, where he manages Minnesota's statewide earned income tax credit and free tax preparation outreach campaign called Claim It. He also manages the story collection program, media relations, and coordinates Prepare and Prosper's local and national policy efforts. Courtney O'Reilly is the Tax Help Colorado program manager at the Piton Foundation a private operating foundation dedicated to improving the lives of Colorado's low-income children. In her role, she oversees the planning, execution, and evaluation of Tax Help Colorado, a VITA program which utilizes college and high school students to operate free tax sites on their, college, on their school's campus for college credit. In 2017, Tax Help, tax Help Colorado operated 23 sites and filed nearly 8,800 returns. Jessica Grote works for the Cooperative Ministry. The Cooperative Ministry works to improve the lives of the working poor in the South Carolina Midlands 
through crisis assistance and financial sustainability. As a director of financial sustainability programs, Jessica delivers financial education and coordinates the VITA program. So first off, what is a taxathon? A taxathon is a special type of tax filing event to promote your tax site and excite the community around EITC and free tax filing. There isn't one set formula for a taxathon, and there are many ways to adapt the event based on your organization's capacity and the needs of your community. Why hold a taxathon? There are many benefits to hosting a taxathon for your free tax preparation program. Taxathons are an effective way to jumpstart your outreach early in the tax season. This engaging event can help bring in new clients, especially those that could be eligible for the EITC. And in general, taxathons are a great way to make tax filing fun for your team and the community. Most people don't look forward to filing their taxes. Taxathons create a point of interest that can help shift this attitude. Organizing a taxathon. Planning a taxathon might seem a little overwhelming at first, but taxathons are for, are for free tax programs of all sizes. Today's presenters will share their experiences holding large, medium, and small scale taxathons. Our presenters will teach you key elements for organizing this event from recruiting and training volunteers to marketing strategies to obtaining media coverage. Once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Our first presenter will be Taylor Putz from Prepare and Prosper. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. Well, hi, everyone, and uh, thanks again so much for joining. As Sam mentioned, my name is Taylor Putz, and I'm the Community Relations and Outreach Manager at Prepare and Prosper in St. Paul, Minnesota. I was responsible for carrying out Prepare and Prosper's first ever taxathon about two years ago now. And I'm really excited that all of you are here and interested in possibly holding your own taxathon during the upcoming tax season. To be honest, um, before I get into my slides, I think the taxathon is probably one of the best things that we did to engage our volunteers, to serve more taxpayers, and to have some fun early in the taxathon, or early in the tax season rather. Um, but I'm probably a little biased. Go to the next slide. For, so for those of you who may not know about Prepare and Prosper, we're based in St. Paul and free tax preparation is the core of our services. So we operate eight Vita sites in the Twin Cities metro area and serve about 13,000 taxpayers every year. At each of our tax sites, we also have integrated financial services so taxpayers can open savings accounts, pull credit reports, and get access to other financial services and products I manage our statewide earned income tax credit and free tax preparation outreach campaign called Claim It. Um, we're also working on developing a new financial product here at Prepare and Prosper for the financially unserved. And lastly, um, we bridge our direct service work with some policy change work. So why we held a taxathon? The idea for a taxathon came from two people here at Prepare and Prosper, Anel and Alethea. Anel is responsible for answering the phones and scheduling the appointments. We have three appointment sites out of our eight. And she saw firsthand just how fast the appointments filled up for early February and really wanted to figure out a way where we could serve more people instead of turning them away and hoping that they will not go to paid preparers. The other individual, Alethea, uh, who I mentioned, is one of our tax site managers at one of our busiest tax sites. And once she heard um, Anel talk about just how busy or how fast the appointments fill up in early February, she said, well, what if we never turn people away and start doing taxes until three in the morning? And so that's where the idea for a taxathon was born. And once my colleague, Stacy, our marketing and communications director, heard the idea, we thought it would be a great opportunity to garner some media coverage early in the tax, or early in the tax season if we held a marathon tax event where we filed taxes for 24 hours. The previous year, we organized a press conference on Earned Income Tax Credit Awareness Day that frankly was a lot of work um, and it really didn't yield sort of the media coverage we were looking for. So this opportunity to do a taxathon sort of would begin to serve as our opportunity to get some really great media coverage early in the tax season. 
We also held a tech-a-thon to engage our volunteers, especially to give them the opportunity to practice doing more tax returns earlier in the tax season. We knew that the Taxathon would rely on having enough volunteers, and to be honest, we were surprised by the reaction of our volunteers to participate. Both years, we only had to send out one email to our volunteers asking them to sign up for the Taxathon, and within a few days, all the shifts were filled. What was the message that worked for them? We believe it was the same reason why we were holding a Taxathon, so we could serve more taxpayers early in the season. Lastly, our organizational brand at Prepare and Prosper really embraces opportunities for us to celebrate free tax preparation. This event was definitely going to be a celebration. So after the first year of the Taxathon, I asked our planning committee if they were to describe the Taxathon in one word, how would they describe it? And here's what they said, fun, successful, festive, energizing, exhausting, and community. Um, I think this is sort of an accurate picture of what the Taxathon is. Um, it can be all of these things at one time. So let me get into some of the notes, nuts and bolts of the Taxathon year one versus year two. We held the Taxathon at our main office, our main tax site, instead of using one of our tax sites where we run out of a community center. And a little bit of our, our main office site and why we chose that, it's an appointment only site so for the Taxathon, that means we didn't have to promote the event to taxpayers, um, sort of anxiously waiting for appointments to fill up. Rather, we just knew that appointments would, would fill up like normal um, because it was our busiest time of the year. So when we were scheduling the two days of the Taxathon, we looked at previous year data to determine when our busiest weekend of the tax season was. And that ended up being the first weekend in February. And the, la the Taxathon lasted 24 hours both years although it did not run straight through the night. Um, so during the first year, we held it on a Friday from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. and Saturday, same time, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, during the second year, some of our program staff really wanted to um, file taxes late into the evening, so we decided to extend our hours until 1 a.m. in the morning, um, Friday into Saturday. Um, and then we ended a little earlier to make up the 24 hours total at 5 p.m. on Saturday instead of the previous year at 9. The last thing I want to mention is that we did not add all new shifts for the Taxathon. So out of the six shifts total we have on um, uh, over the course of the 24 hours, we only added four new shifts. Um, so two were already scheduled on Saturday morning from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m., which meant we only needed to fill volunteer spots for about four of the six shifts. This made it easier for us. So in total, we had about 125 volunteers help at the Taxathon. And so how it broke down is we had um, approximately 12 tax preparers, um, four to five reviewers, um, and then we had one to two financial advocate volunteers. Those are the volunteers who are helping open savings accounts and pull credit reports. Um, and then we had two volunteers serving as sort of intake manager, helping people check people in and helping people check out. And in the course of the two days, we were able to help around 200 taxpayers file their taxes and each year returned about more than $700,000. Now, when we were communicating about the event to the media, to our partners, and to our volunteers, the numbers were really important because it helped paint a picture of the event. Um, and it also really brought some energy to the event as well. You know, we would communicate that our goal of the Taxathon was to help 200 taxpayers return $700,000 in tax refunds to the community in just 24 hours. And that caught people's attention. So before I dive into sort of what we did at the event, um, I wanna talk about how we structured the planning. So for us, this was a media event. So the marketing and communications team really led the planning team that met um, two to three times from September until January to brainstorm and plan the event. And the planning team consisted of staff from different departments, such as someone from our tax department, our volunteer department, fundraising development, and our marketing teams. 
And then we held um, sort of a debrief evaluation meeting in February or early March. Um, and then here at Prepare and Prosper, we encouraged our full-time staff to help during the taxathon as well, um, to do extra things like fill up the popcorn maker, take some pictures, and greet our customers. So here is what we did at the taxathon. So we began the taxathon on Friday morning with a kickoff event with our volunteers who were there for the first shift, and we invited some of our partners from our State Department of Revenue, the local United Way, our IRS representative, um, and some staff from our local congressional offices. The kickoff event was held 10 minutes before the event, and the speakers talked about why we were holding this taxathon, our goals, and the importance of free tax preparation. We also made sure that we heavily thanked the volunteers for their help. The best part of the kickoff event, in my opinion, was the countdown, where we engaged everyone in counting down to start the event. So picture this, we all are gathered in a circle, um, and together we are sort of yelling, five, four, three, two, one, taxathon. Um, and we made sure, of course, to Facebook Live the kickoff event um, for it to be saved and for others to watch. And then we began doing taxes. So the results board, is integral to our taxathon. The results board was displayed on our chalkboard wall for everyone to see, from customers, volunteers, partners, staff, and at every shift it was updated and we took a picture to post on social media. So the tricky part of the results board though was making sure that we were tracking all of the information correctly from the customers. So tracking this information as you may know, is not sort of part of the normal tax clinic procedure. So when our volunteer who was checking out our customer um, they had to sort of fill out an Excel sheet that they had to put down sort of the customer's name, what number customer they were, and if they received a refund, how much did, was their state, federal, and property tax refund. This allowed us to calculate the totals to update the results board. The reason why it was tricky was because sometimes uh, our volunteers forgot to write in this information because there's lots of things to do. Um, so as they were checking out a customer, we really tr truly made sure that our volunteers remembered this part. Contests. We use contests as a way to engage our customers and our volunteers throughout the event. So every 25th customer received $5 and we took a picture with them to post on social media. Um, we also had a guessing game for our customers to guess how many candy bars were in a jar um, and a tax quiz for our volunteers at every shift. So something that we learned during the first year that was, was that we needed to add some fun to the Saturday morning shifts because those were the two normal shifts. Um, and so our volunteers come every Saturday for those shifts. And so we realized we needed to add a little bit more fun. And so we reached out to some of our partners and learned actually that one of them was connected to a troop of su superheroes that would attend events for free like birthday parties. So we're like, well, why don't we have them come by the tax clinic on Saturday morning? Um, so as you can see in the picture, you know, we had some superheroes, Captain Jack Sparrow, Spider-Man and others um, stop by and the volunteers and the customers just had a blast. It also made for some uh, great pictures on social media. And then, you know, we really wanted to make sure that um, our, our volunteers uh, were, were kept caffeinated and fed, um, and some volunteers volunteered for eight hours straight, um, and so we made sure we had food and coffee for everyone. And how we did this was um, we invited some of our donors and our community partners who might not be volunteers but still support our work to get involved in the event by bringing some food for the volunteers at the event. Then when they would come and bring the food, we sort of used it as a site visit so they could really see our work in action. Um, and we also, you know, I think, a piece that made this event great was we worked with one of our community partners who for the past two years um, donated her popcorn machine um, so customers and volunteers could grab some popcorn um, and the smell of the popcorn sort of really made the event as people were walking in. Uh, lastly, we made sure that we had some really good coffee there um, which our volunteers and customers loved. Media, as I mentioned, media was a major component of this event. We sent out a media advisory to all the local TV stations and then made some follow-up calls to newsrooms. And we found it really easy to pitch this event. As you know, taxes and tax season can be complicated to communicate to the media who have very short amount of time to sort of understand what you're doing to see if they should send a reporter there. 
Um, and we found that taxathon was a really easy word to talk about, um, especially when it was followed by 24 hours of tax preparation where our volunteers will return more than half a million dollars in refunds. Um, that really created a picture um, and they couldn't miss it. Additionally, the fact that the event was 24 hours long also gave the media the flexibility to stop by when they had time. A lot of them stopped by on the first day, in the morning, in the afternoon. Um, this also meant that we had to be ready. Um, and in the resource guide that we'll share at the end, um, I've included some of our press materials in there for you. During the second year of the Texathon, we added some picture frames to the event, um, and so those were printed. Um, one said hashtag Taxathon, which was the hashtag that we were using throughout the event, um, and the other one said I filed my taxes for free. Um, people loved these um, the picture frames, and we used the pictures on social media, um, and uh, we continue to use them uh, even now. We wanted to make sure that we uh, engaged the kids in the event as well. So we worked with a local designer to put together a coloring sheet um, that when kids were waiting with their parents, um, they would color the coloring sheet, hand it to us, and we would hand it or we would hang it up throughout the tax clinic. Um, and we've been using these coloring sheets for the past two years. We didn't just use them at the taxathon, um, but we continue to, to use them at our tax clinics. The ambiance of the event is, is really vital. Um, one of the customers, as they were walking in, said, the tax clinic, it feels like a party. Um, and that was right on. We purchased lots of balloons and other sort of party favors for the tax clinic um, to make it feel like a party, a celebration. Um, additionally, we had all of our volunteers wear the same t-shirt for the event. Um, so they sort of really felt part of the event by wearing the t-shirt. Uh, it also made for some great pictures. The last thing I'll mention is our sort of final picture. Um, we toyed around with the idea of doing a big sort of event celebration, inviting some partners back at the end of the taxathon, but by the end we were sort of all exhausted. So similar to the kickoff event, but significantly way less work, we gathered our volunteers and our customers and really anyone um, to do a fun group picture at the end of the tax clinic um, on Saturday at the Texathon. So we bought some party hats um, and some party whistles, and you can see the picture there from um, our last the Texathon last year. So my last slide here is lessons learned. Um, so to wrap, to wrap up, I, I want to share some lessons. And first lesson is since our tax site was an appointment only site, and since we were promoting the event on the news, some people heard about the event on the news and then a few hours later or the next day they would walk in to the taxathon and want to file their taxes. Um, and so we made sure the second year that we had dedicated space for people who were walking in. Um, and this was like one person a shift, um, so maybe three to four people over the course of a day. As I previously mentioned, um, we really needed to improve our tally sheet process for tracking refunds um, that informs our results board, and that's something that we're going to be focusing on this year. Uh, thirdly, we need to buy more balloons because the kids who come to the event love to take those balloons home, and we want to send balloons home with them. Um, so we just need to make sure that we have balloons for the entire event. Fourthly, um, there's a lot taking place already at a normal tax clinic, and then when you add some com components to the, the taxathon, there's sort of a lot going on. And so it was really important for us to have sort of one person at the event who knew what was going on related to all of the taxathon stuff um, to make sure things were running smoothly, um, to make sure our volunteers were, were tracking returns um, on the tracking sheet. And lastly, if you're doing this taxathon on top of sort of an already planned tax clinic um, intentionally plan some extra activities for that normally scheduled clinic. So with that, um, thank you so much and uh, that wraps it up for me. Awesome, thank you so much for that presentation, Taylor. I loved the tip about the balloons and I think I've told you already, I just love the superheroes that y'all got to come to your event. Um, so next, we will have Courtney from the P-Town Foundation, Foundation who, will talking, who will talk about how to host a taxathon with a medium-sized tax site. 
Hi, yes, this is Courtney O'Reilly. I'm the program manager with Tax Help Colorado at the Piton Foundation. And as was just said, I'm here to talk about um, our first taxathon we um, hosted last year that, you know, compared to all the wonderful things that Prepare and Prosper did, we saw this more as a medium um, model experience. So just a bit of background. Um, just want to provide a bit of information on what the Peyton Foundation is. So it's a private operating foundation established in 1976 by Denver oil man Sam Gary. The, uh, the foundation's enduring mission over the last 40 years is to improve the lives of Colorado's low-income children and their families. As part of our strategy to improving the economic security of Colorado families, the foundation began the tax credits for working families outreach campaign over 25 years ago to increase awareness about beneficial tax credit, like our favorite, the earned income tax credit. Um, in addition to traditional marketing and paid advertisement, the campaign works with nearly 700 partners statewide to distribute more than 1.2 million pieces of educational material about the EITC and free tax filing resources. Um, I'm sure it will come as no surprise to anyone listening that as we um, started to see an uptick in EITC participation and families filing to receive these large refunds, paid preparers started increasing their fees and pushing predatory lending products. Um, so to help support families claim the EITC in a safe and secure way, we started looking around at different FIDA models to see where there were opportunities to expand. And about 10 years ago, we adopted a model used in New Mexico to create Tax Help Colorado. Um, as was mentioned earlier, we rely almost entirely on community college and high school students to operate free tax sites. The students take an accredited course in the fall to learn how to prepare individual income taxes, and then in the spring they receive an additional credit for operating the free tax site as a part of our uh, a lab or practicum. By utilizing these schools, we operated 23 sites and prepared nearly 9,000 returns last year, and our sites are in both rural and urban locations and range from very small to, um, you know, sites that do over 1,200 returns a tax season. So we've got quite the, quite the group. Um, so why did we do this tax bond? Um, so, you know, kind of something we ran into every year, we were trying to increase awareness and participation. Um, so we put a lot of effort and energy into the EITC Awareness Day and putting a speaking event. Um, each year and each year it was more and more difficult to get somebody to come out and speak about the EITC and the importance of it and more importantly uh, it became increasingly difficult to make this an exciting new thing for um, ERD media to cover and spread the word about tax filing benefits. So when I heard Prepare and Prosper share information about their taxathon at last year's Asset Learning Conference I was yes inspired and amazed. Um, I saw this to be a really great opportunity to create a buzz about the EITC and, and free tax assistance that would potentially attract more elected officials and local media than our traditional Awareness Day speaking event. We still participated in an Awareness Day through digital and social media, but we use it to also tease and promote the upcoming taxathon. Um, in addition to thinking through how we can create earned media, we also saw it as an opportunity um, to offer additional assistance. As I mentioned earlier, we use students, some of which who are in high school, um, to run our tax sites. And because of our volunteer stream, we're just not able to safely introduce financial coaching and counseling at our sites. And so this event allowed us to invite in groups that specialize in um, these and other types of assistance. Um, another goal was to work more closely with other VITA groups in Colorado, so we decided to capitalize on the moment and partner with another prominent VITA group in the metro region, Denver Asset Building Coalition, or DABC, to make this event a success. And of course, it would allow us to serve more families during our busiest week of tax season. As Taylor already mentioned, first week of February tends to kind of uh, crush all of our sites with capacity issues, and so we just decided to meet that head on. So, all right, so our model, so, oh, and I'm just skipping ahead. Okay, so our model, um, we, I was really excited about the idea of a 24 hour tax bond, but for our first year and kind of the parameters in which we work, we decided to make it a 12 hour tax bond. It still got a lot of buzz that, you know, we have volunteers coming in for such a good amount of time to help a community in need. Um, so 12 hour didn't, deter too many people from getting excited about it. 
And as I already said, we worked with DABC to plan and execute the event. So we were able to increase our volunteer capacity as well as the supplies we had available. Um, since we were working with an outside group, we decided to have it kind of at a neutral location where neither of us had a current tax site. So we partnered with Mile High United Way um, they had a really large um, central location that fit a lot of our needs for the event, um, and they were a great partner to work with since they already work so closely in the community. Um, we decided to not have a speaking engagement. Um, it would just kind of, we had too many unknowns going into our first year. How many volunteers were gonna show up? How many people were gonna show up? Is this gonna be worthwhile for anybody to come and speak at? And so we just decided, you know what, forget it. We've got a lot of other things to worry about. Let's just kind of scrap that idea and evaluate for next year. We did put a huge emphasis on partner engagement though. And so we reached out to groups like Empowered, which does financial um, coaching and counseling that again, we're not able to, to be at the event to kind of share their resources. We also put aside a room that would be specifically used for our partners to um, talk one-on-one -on -one with about sensitive information. In addition, we used um, different health clinics um, that had resources for families in that area, taxpayer advocate service. Um, in total, we had nine different groups coming in um, to help share their resources. We thought that if there was a good wait time, we could make this more of a resource there. So we set up um, the booths and the tables in the same area we were going to have clients filling out their intake sheets and waiting between each of our steps. So again, just kind of um, trying to market them in a positive, oh, while you're waiting, you might as well talk to these groups sort of way. Um, like uh, what Prepare and Prosper did, we had a kid's table with balloons, coloring sheets, puzzles. Um, we hid some of the candy until parents approved, but we did have it available, so that got out pretty quickly. Um, and then we also, um, something that we differed on, so most of our tax sites uh, are on a first come first serve basis. We don't take appointments for 90% of the sites we run, and so we decided to do that with the taxes on. Um, and again, we weren't sure, you know, what our volunteer uh, capacity was going to be at that time, so we just had first come, first serve, um, hoping that we'd get more in the afternoon after we got some promotion out there and started hyping it day of. Um, we also wanted to explore offering all three tax models during the day, so we had our traditional um, facilitated self-assistance and drop-off all available depending on, um, you know, what a family or an individual would prefer. Like at most of our tax sites, we also heavily um, promote story collection and utilize volunteers to just get the, ex the real experience. Um, I don't know why that switched. Um, to get the true understanding and experience of you know, what it is they use their refund for, what is it, you know, how important are free tax sites in your area. We use that um, just to kind of create a better picture of who, who really gets these credits, like I'm sure some of you are able to do. Um, and yeah, we saw this as a way to really promote what our volunteers do and, um, you know, make sure they understand how much we appreciate. So we had a ton of food, coffee, energy drinks, you name it, we had it there. We also did a raffle for each of our shifts um, to try to get more people to sign up. Then it was a $25 gift card to Starbucks. Um, next year, we're going to take a poll to see what, what is the most intriguing gift card that would really motivate them to come. Um, and so at the end of the day, um, we actually had a tremendous number of volunteers show up more than we really expected. And quite a few of them worked 12 hours straight, um, which I think next year we're gonna kind of try to encourage away from, want everybody to be sharp. Um, but they committed, or they volunteered over 350 volunteer hours. At the height of the day, we had 60 volunteers all at Mile High Uni United Way ready to help. Unfortunately, um, because this was a new uh, new event and new location for tax prep, we didn't get as many taxpayers in the door, um, which there was a bit of strategy. We were a little worried, again, not knowing how many students we were going to be able to get um, throughout the day on, a, on Friday, on a school day. Um, but now we know we are going to just heavily promote it next year to get more people in. Um, we got two elected officials to visit during the day and thank our volunteers, get a better understanding of what it is we do, 
why this is something they should support in future years um, and just was a really good kind of photo op opportunity for them and for us. All right, so I keep skipping ahead. Um, as I mentioned, we had nine partnering organizations um, and then through this work and through working with Denver Asset Building Coalition, you know, our two groups are pretty big in the metro region, but we realized the need for having a closer statewide VITA coalition. Um, so we're actually, because of this event, we got into talks about creating a summit this October that hopefully will bring our groups together to share resources, best practices, and just get a better sense of who's doing what throughout the state. So that was an added bonus that we weren't really anticipating. Um, social media, we had a lot more um, engagement on social media than we've ever had for any other event. So we decided that was um, very successful and we want to continue to think through ways of better engaging um, during the day and making somebody just assigned for social media that day with no other tasks. Because as we know, these things can get busy um, and social media is sometimes the last thing you think of. So really grateful to have a team member dedicated to that next year. Um, Earn Media, we got a couple of different news stories from it. Um, most importantly, Denver 7 came out to interview us. Take, um, they did a big push for the second part of our day where we got a couple more people in because of their coverage. But more importantly, they just talked about the benefits of filing taxes and that, hey, it's tax season. Get out there. There are free um, resources out there. Take advantage of that. And so we really appreciated um, that coverage and couldn't have asked for a better reception. All right, so lessons learned. Um, I've already kind of mentioned a few of these, but to start, we're just going to start planning earlier. I've actually started reaching out to some of our partners to get a date on the calendar for September. Um, I think it's just now that we know the potential of this and what it really can turn into, we want to just put a little bit more work early on to delegate some of those tasks, get everybody on the same goals, really come up with what what is our purpose um, and how are we going to execute on it. We, as I mentioned, we're going to increase promotion next year and just really build this up now that we know how many volunteers engage in this type of event and how successful it was on that front. We, um, in addition to make sure we're helping as many people as possible, we're really going to schedule appointments next year, which is a little out of our box, but i um, excited to see what um, comes of that. We'll also make sure that walk-ins are welcome on a first-come, first-served basis as we have time. Um, we also want to spend some time training our partner organizations that come in and utilize the resource fair aspect. Um, something we saw is they mostly sat behind the table and didn't really seek out taxpayers to talk to and were expecting taxpayers to come to them. Um, that's not always the case, and we want to make sure they understand and um, share some best practices they've had and what we've had in getting clients to really kind of come in, um, talk to them, how to share their resources. So we're excited to initiate that this year. We also are just, you know, constantly encouraged by what our um, other groups are doing, and so even some of the stuff Taylor just mentioned, we're excited to um, you know, kind of steal some of those ideas and make it our own and run with it next year because I think, you know, the pictures speak for themselves and really tell a beautiful story about why why you should come do this, why it's fun, why it's exciting, and it's not, it, it shouldn't be, shouldn't feel like a burden. Um, so my advice for you, since we, we learned a lot our first year, um, is just to prioritize what your goals are and what you can do within those goals. We've thrown so many ideas already at you about all the different ways you can take this, how you can strengthen different parts of what your own goals might be apart from tax fund. But in order for it to be successful, you kind of have to have three different buckets, what you need to have at this tax fund, what you want to have, and then what are some what are some far out wishes that would be great if you get to them but aren't a necessity? Um, I think just having a better idea of what what you want out of this is going to help you be successful. Um, and then, as Taylor kind of already mentioned, identifying team roles and who's that who's the person that's going to be leading it day of. Um, as more of the tax site program manager, it's it really I'm going to kind of step out of that role because I am so consumed that day with actually the tax prep, answering questions, making sure that we're following all of the standards the IRS puts out there. 
Um, and we need somebody else who's kind of running both the, the outreach, the engagement, the tax prep, and the experience for the volunteers and keeping all of that on track. Um, I would also encourage you to include volunteers that aren't currently associated with VITA. I think this is a really great way to recruit new volunteers and just have them come in for the greeting table and just get people signed in or collect stories or work at the kids table because they can learn a little bit more about what you do um, and the importance of it. And so they're probably more willing to get trained in tax after that point. Um, I would also say just reach out to other <laughs> taxathon enthusiasts. Uh, we benefited greatly from talking to Taylor and his team. And I think we were a little lost at different points in our planning, but touching base with them was really helpful. And if there's anything I can do to help answer questions, you know, I know we're limited with time um, for this webinar, but I think, you know, all of us are available to help answer questions, encourage, brainstorm, and all of that. So that's that's really it for me. I just want to say thanks again for letting us share our experience, and I look forward to working with many of you in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney, for all of that great advice, especially um, sharing what you've learned from your very first taxathon experience. Um, with that, we will turn it to Jessica. Um, Jessica will be talking about how to uh, host a taxathon for smaller sites and maybe a smaller budget. I know a lot of you all mentioned in your registration questions that you might not have a good big budget for throwing this kind of event. So how can you do it without a lot of money? So with that, I'll turn it to Jessica. Thank you. Hi, guys. So I am Jessica Grote, and I'm the Director of Financial Sustainability Programs at the Cooperative Ministry in Columbia, South Carolina. And so our motto here is that we are working hard for the working poor, and we do that by being split into two departments. We have crisis, which handles immediate needs like food, clothing, and financial assistance, and then financial sustainability, which covers programs like VITA and financial literacy. Um, last year, our organization served over 13,000 individuals, and about half of those were our VITA clients. And so um, just a little bit about our VITA in general, we had 18 sites last year spread across eight counties, and we recruited about 165 volunteers, which com completed 7,600 returns during the 2017 filing season. And so we were kind of a moderate size VITA location. However, our taxathon event was pretty small scale, and so I'm going to tell you about that here in a moment. Um, our program has grown rather quickly. We've nearly doubled the amount of tax returns we have done over the past few years. However, our budget has remained pretty stagnant. It hasn't really grown as our returns has grown. And so I'm here today to tell you how to run a taxathon on limited or no budget. And I say no budget because we literally did our event on zero dollars. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. So we call our event Super Saturday. Um, more returns with less of a budget means we have to be very selective about the way that we use our staff time and our funding. And so we, here we only have one full-time and one part-time staff member to assist with planning events like this. And so it really limits the number of special events and projects we're able to do throughout the year. That being said, um, we've been holding our taxathon event for many, many years um, since before I've came here. And we just feel it offers so many benefits to the clients, but also the volunteers. Um, we also hold our event like Taylor. We do it the first Saturday in February. And then our event is only four hours long. We did it from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Um, that gives us a little bit of time to get in and set up and then just kind of knock it all out in the morning, do as many returns as we can. So we've tried a few different strategies. Um, one example is the year before last, we did split into three smaller locations, but ultimately we just discovered that the best way of running it is to have the event in one large location that's open for about four hours. That way it's just easier to manage everybody's there all on one site. Um, and here you can see some photos from our event. So why hold a free tax event? By far the best benefit, as all of us have said, is the media coverage. Um, for some reason, the local stations and newspapers are just much more likely to promote our tax sites in general if they have a date attached to them. And so 
with Super Saturday, we have a date and they're more likely to use those press releases than they are my general press releases I found. Um, and then we usually have at least one new station that'll show up for a segment while we're there. The second benefit is that most volunteers who sign up either have not volunteered before or it's been a year since they volunteered and so they're a little bit rusty. And so Super Saturday is a really good opportunity to do some hands-on training with them. Um, especially this past year, it was really helpful with a switch to tax layer because it was like everyone was new and no one was familiar with what was going on. And so it was just really great to have the volunteers get there early and show them how to log in for the first time onto the real site, go over features that weren't covered in the practice lab. Like we had some consents and things like that that they hadn't done before. And so on Super Saturday, we were able to stand there over their shoulders and actually let them ask us questions as they went along and it made them all more comfortable. A third benefit was obviously the additional clients we were able to serve. Um, we did about 65 tax returns. In my opinion, this was a little bit low based on the number of volunteers that we had, but I do attribute that to the taxpayer learning curve. Um, we were obviously slower than usual and so next year I think we'll probably be able to do at least 100 returns at our event. Um, as you all know that there's a huge rush in February as people serve, receive their W-2 so it's a good opportunity to serve those individuals and it took our pressure off of the other sites that are open on weekdays. So how do we do it for free which is what you guys are probably wondering um, and so you really don't have to go all out especially if it's your first year you don't have to do a huge event um, props to Courtney for going so big her first year but you know you don't have to start that big if you don't want to um, all you really need if you think about it is just a location and some volunteers it's just like any other site that you just want to make it a little bit more festive so we used an existing location that we already had and so we already had the SIDN we already had the software um, all we needed was for the location to open during an additional time slot that they're not usually open for um, so we selected one of our busier sites which was at the Columbia Housing Authority uh, they were willing to staff their building and open for us on a Saturday and they did it free of charge because we already had that established relationship um, they let us use their whole building instead of just the one room that we usually use when they're there and they even had some of their staff was there passing out water and granolas to the um, people in the waiting room which was really nice um, finding volunteers was the easiest part. I was really surprised how many people wanted to give up their Saturday mornings, but it was because they wanted some hands-on experience. We had two readers in the front signing people in, and then we had eight graduate students from USC Law School that were in charge of an intake and interview station. Um, they're actually from a different location that the university sponsors but they were all new volunteers um, and they just their instructor really wanted them to get their feet wet before their site opened and so it was great having them there manning the intake station and then we had 16 standard tax preparers and reviewers um, we also had a side room with a facilitated self-assistance room and we had a partnering non-agency staff that room as well um, so then we did also have some specialty booth setups in the waiting area we had three booths this year we had one from a local bank for people who were there and wanted to sign up for bank accounts on the spot and kind of promoting saving and direct depositing their refund there was also a healthcare station for general healthcare questions and then our third booth booth was the taxpayer advocate office i would definitely suggest inviting them they most likely if you have one in your area would want to come um, and so we just went with the booth that we thought would be the most helpful for the clients. So for example, if somebody had an ACA question, we were just able to send them over to the healthcare booth and they could talk to them. But really your options are endless and all those organizations, they support what we do. And so they all came free of charge. Um, to give it more of a party atmosphere, we had some music playing in the background. It's really easy to just bring your speaker from home, hook it up to your phone. Um, we had some signage out front that kind of promoted the event, told them, you know, hey, we're doing free taxes here. I walked all over our building here at the Cooperative Ministry, and I just literally grabbed whatever tablecloths and decorations that I could find that were left over from other events. Um, we now own a popcorn maker. So um, just like Taylor, I agree the popcorn Popcorn is a very fun way to make it festive, so we'll definitely be taking our popcorn maker with us next year. 
And speaking of food, um, we did feel like we needed to feed our volunteers since they were dedicating their Saturdays to us. As you know, I had no money, so I did reach out to a local partner, which was the Young Lawyers Division, and they donated about $100 worth of pizza and soda and stuff like that to feed our volunteers. I've heard that there are some fast food restaurants that are willing to donate free food for events like this, but we just simply didn't have the time or manpower to go around asking those type of favors. And so we just called in a favor for someone that we already knew and we already had. So last, I want to just go over some top tips and suggestions for your event. Um, we started handing out the 13614s and opened our intake station about 30 minutes early. So we opened that about 930 so that our tax preparers could start right there at 10 a.m. Um, it is really important to have that interview station because you're going to have a lot of people at one time in your lobby. And so it's just very chaotic. And so to have that dedicated intake station, it helps reduce any chaos and keeps the crowd, crowd from getting kind of antsy or impatient because then they have that step-by-step -step process to go through. I do want to let you know that our um, site was a walk-in only site as most of our sites are and so our lobby was crowded when we opened but I was really pleased with how easily the traffic flowed throughout the event. Um, we choose to do walk-in only because we be, just feel like we're able to serve the most amount of people by not having any no-shows and things like that. Um, and so what we did is we just had people basically sign in, take a number, and then they would get called to the intake station and then placed in queue for a preparer. Once they were done there, they moved to a second waiting room that we had, and then they were placed in room for a reviewer to um, review and print them. And so it was pretty smooth logistically. Um, we did have one advanced preparer who was walking around the tax preparation room and their sole job was to answer tax law questions and just to help those new volunteers become comfortable with what they're doing. Um, my next tip, very important, is to remember to use the connections that you already have, especially if you're trying to do a free event. Um, this is just, it's not the time to try to create new relationships with vendors or locations. It's just gonna take too much time. And so you gotta remember we were doing a four hour event and so it was just the time to call in favors, you know, reach out to the people we already know and ask them to support us instead of trying to create, you know, new things. Um, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel with this event. Make sure all of your volunteers have this date marked well in advance. Um, Saturdays are very precious to people. And so we did announce that date during our trainings back in December so that people could go ahead and get it on their calendar. And most of our volunteers normally served on weeknights and so they were willing to come in on a Saturday because it didn't interfere with the other volunteering sites. Um, and then last tip is just to make sure you take lots of photos. Um, we all get very busy during tax season and there's just never a good time to stop and take photos. And so this is a really good opportunity to stop, take photos, celebrate your success. And um, we had a great event. So that's all I've got. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Jessica. Um, so thank you so much to all three of our amazing presenters today. Um, all three of them were kind enough to give out their contact information so y'all can reach out to them with any specific questions you have if you need any more guidance or have any questions um, from their presentations. Um, so again, to really guide you through this entire process, Taylor and Courtney um, have put together two toolkits with the resources you need to plan your own taxathon. Uh, they have included plan proposals, sample emails to volunteers and stakeholders, media advisories, press releases, sample programs, instructions for staff, flyers, consent forms, and pictures from last year's events. Um, they put together some really, really thorough kits, so I highly encourage you all to check them out. So we know that planning an event like this can be daunting, so we want to continue providing support where we can. Um, on Thursday, September 14th, we're planning a follow-up session where we'll talk through your ideas and give feedback on draft materials. Uh, Courtney, Taylor, and Jessica are very excited to regroup in a little over a month once you all have started the planning process to help you with your ideas. You'll also be able to meet other VITA folks who are committed to holding a taxathon in 2018. Um, so
So we know how valuable and amazing these taxathon events have been for folks who have helped them. So we don't want to lose any steam. So um, we will. So I'm going to put up a poll right now. So if you are interested in holding a taxathon and want to get help afterwards, please just select yes on the box there. For anyone who's listening to this training after the fact, um, listening to the recording, please email me if you would like to join our uh, support session later. Awesome. So uh, we don't have too much time right now, unfortunately, for questions. We did get a lot of them throughout the presentation. Um, so I'll just do a couple um, questions now and then for anyone whose questions was, were not uh, answered, I'll follow up with you later, or you can email me. Um, so a one, one great piece of advice that someone mentioned in the chat box was to create a bingo card to get clients to go to each partner's table. Um, that way, if they get bingo, they can, um, there can be a giveaway for anyone. Uh, another suggestion was to add FAFSA. So that was Terry's comment. Thank you for that piece of advice. That's a great idea. Um, so let's see. Um, so one question we got was, were your other tax sites open during the taxathon? Um, do any of the presenters want to answer that? Yeah, this is Taylor. Our other sites were um, open on that Saturday morning. We we don't prepare taxes on Fridays, so um, the tax event was just um, on Friday at our main site, and then Saturday morning, like I said, we were preparing taxes at other sites. And we like toyed with the idea of doing taxathons at other sites, um, but we we found it best just to keep it at one location. Awesome, thank you. This okay, is um, and, with oh, sorry. Oh. Oh, sorry. This no, is no, Courtney. Um, this this year we just had the one location open, um, which was able, which is why we were able to get so many volunteers in the metro region to come, since none of their other sites were operating. Um, but in the future, we want to make it more of a statewide effort, and so um, in some of our rural areas, have um, a site going on at the same time that we refer to as a taxathon, with just a couple of the, um, you know, the pomp and circumstance of the taxathon, but not in the same way as large as what we did in the metro region. Awesome. Thank you. Um, another question that we got a bunch was, um, so the taxathon say, oh, oh, so Taylor, yours does, and Courtney, yours does as well. Um, they both uh, stay pretty late. So how do you get volunteers to take the late shift? Was that a problem? This is Taylor. From our perspective, like, and I, I think the other two presenters touched on this, like, we were just so surprised. And when we, like, said we're doing, you know, a taxathon and it'll be late into the evening, our volunteers signed up. Um, we did have to do some, like, specific asks to some people who we knew were night owls and loved doing taxes um, to ask them to volunteer at the late shift on Friday night last year. Um, but it wasn't, I mean, once we asked people, they just said yes. That's amazing. <laughs> um, awesome. So, uh, what another question that came in was, um, so what is, so a lot of sites already do Super Saturday events during the tax season. Um, so, uh, Lizette was trying to understand what the main difference is between a taxathon event and a Super Saturday event. So, this is Cordy. Um, oh, sorry. So, oh, I think since there's, there's no real <laughs> definition of what a taxathon is, I I think we just utilized. I think most importantly, the name. It just it it sounds really quirky and a little nerdy, and it kind of just creates an interesting story of okay, most people know you know the term with anything a thon at the end is long withstanding open site. Um, so it just, I think you can call most anything a taxathon that's at the beginning of the tax season that you make more of a party. Um, so I think it's just a different way of terming events that many groups are already doing. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, let me see. So we do have tons more questions, but it is 
four o'clock now, so I don't want to keep uh, you all or the presenters on the line any longer, but I will be getting in touch with you if uh, you did ask a question and we didn't answer it on the presentation. All right. Um, so thank you all again for joining us. As a reminder, uh, this is another question we got a lot. <laughs> we will be sending I'm not sure what that is, if you can hear that. Um, but um, we we will be sending out the recording, slides, and um, additional resources via email within a week. So just look out for that. Uh, you will be able to rewatch and get all the contact information of every uh, of all the presenters. And please stay in touch with us. We love learning about the kinds of outreach you're engaged in and sharing these strategies with other partners. Here are just a few of the ways that you can find us. Our website and blog are both great resources uh, for these strategies and partner spotlights. Um, and again, check back on the website because we will be posting the two toolkits that um, Taylor and uh, Courtney have created. Again, please email us uh, if you have any questions. You can email eitcoutreach at cbpp.org. We will get back in touch with you, and we love talking with you. So uh, thanks again for every uh, for joining us. Uh, we will be having that support group in a little over a month. So if you have any more questions or anything you want to work through, uh, just save them up, and we'll work through them then. Awesome. Well, thanks again, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining us for a great presentation. Bye.